We live in a world that is coming up with new inventions of entertainment almost daily. How does a godly family deal with all of this? I have some very important issues that affect our children that I would like to take a look at and take a look at our world that we live in in light of the principles that are in the Word of God. It is time for an examination. We all believe in separation, but very few are separated. The world is under judgment, dear brothers and sisters. It is reserved on the fire already. Many have allowed a host of evil teachers to gather their children around them and teach them the ways of the heathen, and it's time that it stopped. Let us look at some of these real issues. Please, please, just consider the television. No single influence has destroyed more lives than he. How can we set our children down before them who turn aside from the Lord? It is a wicked thing that we have set before our eyes. Through the eye gate, our children are inflamed with passions that plague them all the rest of their days. Most of those who stand before the cameras are filled with lies and deceit. If we place their opinions and values next to the Word of God, they're Antichrist. We are warned not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, and the television is full of it. The television is Satan's number one tool to train the next generation in his evil ways. God's people should not be there with them, and our precious children should not be allowed to sit at the feet of this wicked teacher and bow at its altar. I personally believe that this issue is urgent and it calls for strong measures. The lesson that you will give your children if you take a sledgehammer to that thing and hew it to pieces in Jesus name is worth $10,000. Smash it to pieces. What about movies and drama? The theaters, the videos, and now the DVDs are all shouting for the attention of our children and for the most part they have gotten what they're crying for. This form of media is deception with a capital D, brothers and sisters. It is all fake. Hurting people put on false faces and act like they are enjoying the blessings of life when in reality they are dying on the inside and contemplating suicide. Why would we want to sit our precious sons and daughters down before these hypocrites? There is also a desensitizing of the conscience about sin that takes place when you sit your family and you in front of that stuff. After you watch so many murders, then murder isn't so bad anymore. It has a desensitizing effect upon you. Drama is the use of extreme emotions to make a story grip the audience. Anger must become wrath. Love must be manifested in deep lust. Disagreements must become a slugging fight or it just isn't very good. The flesh is never satisfied with what it sees, so the movies move on to rape, murder, and witchcraft. Where will this all end? I tell you, it'll end in utter destruction of this land we're living in. What about the modern toys? Toys are not innocent child's play. That is a devil's lie. Play has always been practice and meditation for future living. When the hearts were right, the toys were baby dolls and tractors, and real life followed right along accordingly. But it's not that way anymore. The times have changed. The baby doll has become a Barbie doll who wears mini skirts and paints her face. She has a figure that is impossible to match, but the girls are trying with every means they can to try to match it, and that's where bulimia and anorexia come from. The tractor has been replaced with a hot rod that peels down the street and is the pride of every young man's dream. These are the first fruits of destruction! We have gone way beyond these to utterly evil, demonic toys. You can now practice witchcraft and prepare for deep satanic rituals by purchasing Dungeons and Dragons. On the toy shelf, by the way. 
The stuffed toys have been replaced with these gruesome looking creatures from the underworld of the damned. Brothers and sisters, Satan is behind every bit of it. Every bit of it. Just like he's made Halloween look like a big party, when in actuality it's the devil's high day and human sacrifices are being made on that day while the children are foolishly going out looking like demons. What about computer games? Even the secular media is raising questions about the connection between the practice of these games and youth walking down the halls in the school shooting their classmates with real guns. You say, well, we don't go for things like that. We're Christian. I'm glad you don't go for things like that, but who wants to be a part of any of it, seriously? How about reading material? Most children are avid readers. I mean, give them some to read. They're just like, mmm. They just eat them up as fast as you can come up with a new one that you think is okay for them to read. This presents a real challenge to parents. But it's one that we need to take seriously and not just let them read whatever they get their hands on. When you're choosing books, I would encourage you to stick to the true, the real, and stay away from the imaginary. We are being overrun with Christian novels. And the church is eating up this material by the millions. They all have a story of romance in them. And they are mostly read by ladies and girls. Interesting, isn't it? They present an unreal, fuzzy kind of love affair that is not true in real life. A girl's lust for romance is stimulated by reading these books. It is nothing but emotion and flesh. Burn them. The mystery thrillers have given way to the end time thrillers and now all the boys also have something to captivate their receptive minds till 3 o'clock in the morning on. Stay away from it, my dear brothers and sisters. Stay away from it. Away from it. Away from it. Away from it. What about the internet? The first issue I see when I look at the use of the internet is T-I-M-E. But the main issue is the filth that is available to those who go looking for it. It has revealed the low level of spiritual strength that Christian men have in this land. Someone said, what are we going to do? Look at what's happening to all our Christian men. I say, it's just revealing where they've been at all along. No fire of God burning in their soul. They live in the flesh, so they get trapped by every hook that the devil throws out. I would encourage you, there are options available that protect you and your family from this evil. Don't wait until you've had a tragedy to do something about it. And if you can't handle it, smash it! What about Christian rock music? When Balaam could not curse Israel because of God's blessing on them, he taught of another way to curse Israel indirectly. He sent sensual women down into the camp of Israel and the rest is history. This is the story that I think of when I consider the destructive influence that wrong music has had on our youth. That would be sad enough, but it is now reached over into the Christian realm, and now the church is dancing to the world's music with some sanctified words thrown in. Even the subtitle that I have used is a misnomer. Christian rock? That's like Christian gambling and Christian beer. They don't go together. At least not yet, but probably they're on the way. Somehow they'll figure out a way to sanctify gambling and beer too. I want to encourage you fathers to stand at the gate and check out the music that your children are listening to. Sit down with your family and get a clear understanding from all that are there that it is okay for Papa to check out the music and he can throw away any that he wants to. And we will bless him and thank him for it. Lastly, silly Bible stories. Some time back, it came into the minds of Christian educators that children learn better if the material is funny. Well, the children really did sit up and listen as they laughed their way through the Bible story. From there they went to the silly puppets, which really made everybody laugh. But now, it's the norm. That's the only way you can learn the Bible, is with a silly little puppet up there dancing around in front of the children. Most material 
for the little ones is full of this nonsense method of teaching. Moses is a funny little man with a big round nose with eyes that look like precious moment babies instead of a prophet, a fiery prophet who stood for God in the midst of hard times. Now they have put these things in animated cartoons and added silly voices to go along with it. These creative educators have now come up with the greatest perversion of them all. King David is a cucumber. He's a cucumber playing his harp. You mean it's okay for David, the prophet David, the psalmist David, that powerful man, that giant killer, it's okay for David to be a singing cucumber? This whole thing is the devil's device to water down the word of God and his testimony to the next generation. I guarantee you, that's what it is. He's out after him. Hmm. It's time to have a house cleaning. We've invited these things into our home to entertain our children while we do better things. Most of this has happened because the fathers have not been watching at the gates. Dear fathers, how are the walls and the gates of your home? Are they broken down? Have you directed your family with holy standards? I pray that God will give you the strength and courage to cleanse your home of anything that defiles it. Oh, your children will never forget it. I remember back there, I remember what that dad got all excited in. He went through the house and I mean, when he got done, we had a pile of this and we had a pile of this and he got out the sledgehammer and took care of these and started a fire and took care of these and all of these went to the garbage dump. Oh, what a blessed memory in the hearts and lives of children to look back to a day when dad finally got on fire for God and destroyed all the junk that was in the house, defiling the children. Now that's taking a stand for God, amen? It's about time we quit being ashamed of being Christians. And I will encourage you dads, rise up and take the lead, and you dear moms, stand beside your man. Don't you make a fuss if he wants to break something, even if he breaks the wrong thing. Thank God he wants to break something. Amen? Let's pray.